it feels as if for the average person that Biden is being run. Right. But we don't know what really that means. Who runs him? Do you have names of people who run him? It's just it comes back to this man. It's the machine. You could you could but what's you could the pick, machine? You like, could pick your Susan Rice's. And we about to get to it, baby, baby. Yeah. But he challenged me on. So one of my core principles, we have sort of 10 hard things that are true. We say in the campaign, one is reverse racism is racism. Yes. And so he, he first he showed up big. He's a fit guy, he's a pastor. He said, first thing is I challenge you to 10 push-ups. So we pounded down, hammered out the 10 push-ups. Yeah. And then the harder question was, when there's been a history of systemic racism in the United States, how do you take that into account when you say reverse racism is racism? And we actually had, he, he actually was totally fine on the Christianity piece of this. He understood the distinction, but he was coming at it more from that angle. We had a good discussion and a good exchange that day. We stayed in touch. About three weeks later, he became one of our precinct captains, actually, oh, wow. which is interesting. And and I think that there were a lot of just beautiful moments through this whole thing. And even with the, with the other two pastors I mentioned, I consider that progress that we were actually able, I would rather us be able to have those open exchanges yeah. than to have that bottled up and fester with some sort of deep, you know, I would say unhealthy, toxic frustration that sometimes comes up when no, people I, aren't able to speak in the open. I think that's smart. I think that's smart. Now, here's a question that I think um, everybody wants to know. Why does everyone hate Nikki Haley so much? Does everyone hate Nikki? It seems like everyone oh loves- Oh my the, God. The, the, the corporate press loves Nikki Haley. You mean Nick at the Haley? <laughs> Yeah. Is that your real name, Nikita? Nikita. It's yeah. Nikita. Nikita. Oh, Nikita. 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 Oh, He just wanted even. to say that other N-word. <laughs> <laughs> he found a way to sneak it <laughs> in, this man. Yeah. Yeah. And he almost normal. made me say it. She's <laughs> Namrata. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay, she but- She can go with a normal- Namrata Randwa Haley. Yes, yeah, sir. Namrata. Namrata. And anyway. she calls me Vivek. <laughs> so she <laughs> it up on purpose. I, I, I think Thousand that, percent. Dude. I think that it's almost- I, I don't know that she thinks of it as doing it on purpose, but it's almost native and hardwired to who she is that it's exactly how she Does she know what- Past you are, dude. <laughs> Does she know you're? A she, 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 the, the, the thing is, it doesn't. It doesn't make it. It's, for her, there's She's one. Hindu for the there's race. one she currency that matters, oh. which is which is power, personal power, and do so whatever. So she, she is just insane lust for power. Insane lust for power. And yeah. she is tied to the corporate interests. Is that what the yeah? I would greatest say, criticism is. Does I would say that feel... I would say it's not specific to her, right? I could, it could apply to Dick Cheney. You could apply it to anyone of a certain breed of Republican yeah. or anyone in the neoliberal kind of fashion of Democrat too of the last 25 years is whatever it takes to accumulate an added ounce of money and power is what we're going to do. Use an ideology as a vector to do it, to mm. project American power, mm. which actually is a philosophy that creates American weakness in the name of creating an illusion of power. And we're going to fight foreign wars, and we're going to create a domestic surveillance state as a consequence. A smart, and you could put a D at the end of it, or you could put an R at the end of it. Doesn't it's the matter. same philosophy hiding on the front. And that's what she represents. And so I think what's going on in the Republican Party right now. We have been teaching people how to grow online. It's been absolutely amazing. We have three people who have been able to reach monetization in less than 30 days. Growing YouTube channels, some from zero people. We have one guy who had two subscribers before he started working with me. He started helping him. His views went up 4.8 million percent. We're super excited. If anybody ever want to grow on YouTube, you reach out to me with the word coach. There's an ideological fissure about what this party is. I mean, what does it mean to be Republican? It's kind of a meaningless term, really. Mm. It, it's Biden bad is the closest thing the Republican Party's had to an agenda in the last you know, right. five years. It's Biden bad, Trump good. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that's pretty but, much. But Trump, Biden bad, winner good. What, what do Our we, team good. What do we, what do we stand for? Mm. And so I think we should stand for the two basic ideas I said at the beginning. The people who like to run the government to run the government, they're the old moral duty to the citizens of this nation. Mm -hmm. Not another one, simple, two simple ideas. But I think there's an alternative view that says it's the job of the US to be the global hegemon, that's the police, global police state keeper. Mm -hmm. And in order to do that, we have to have a federal police state at home that requires under the table violations of your constitutional rights. And if that means tying your social media accounts to your government issued ID as a mandate to use the internet, which is a policy she's advocated for, that's what it takes. Mm. And so the, the post 9-11 Dick Cheney, George Bush, Patriot Act, Iraq war, fuming Republicans, have created a modern avatar. It's called Nikki Haley. Right. And they're trying to reclaim this thing known as the Republican Party. And then there's an alternative vision that says, 
it's what I would call kind of a libertarian nationalist vision. I think I'm the only person to use that term, but that's how I would describe my view of the world to say that the, the way of the future is one of guaranteeing at all costs our constitutionally enshrined freedoms and to take care of the citizens of this country. So Nikki represents traditional conservative. I wouldn't even call it conservative because conservative yeah, is, is let's can, find can mean the, so many things. Let's find the right word. The machine? I, mean, I, I think the fancy word for this would be state? neoconservative. But she, is she deep state? She's a product of the deep state. She's a product of deep state. She's Biden product. is also a product of deep yeah, state. Yeah, I would say so. so essentially, the puppets of the deep yeah, state. Okay, yeah. that's a great way to look at it because yeah. It feels as if, for the average person, that Biden is being run, right? He is being run. He's he being is. run. That's yeah. what the average person, but we don't know what really that means. Who runs him? Do you have names of people who run him? It's just, so it comes back to this, man. It's the machine. You could, you could, but what's you could the pick, machine? You like, could pick your Susan Rices or the Hillary Clintons or the Barack Obamas, but it doesn't matter. Cause, but cause currently, it's like, do we know who's it's doing It's like the San Antonio Spurs. Hey, man, and Andrew Tate is trying to, uh, Andrew Schultz, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, Andrew Schultz is trying to get some deets. He's asking him some specific who's, we just need to know who exactly is running him, all right? Because we talking to somebody that's on the inside and we sure you know. So go ahead and give us some information, bro. You came in for a reason. I know y'all are talking about his haircut and his, um, his mustache. I think it's actually pretty cool. Usually you fade that. Like black people would not um, just cut it and just leave it like just shaved without fading it. It'll have to go from the the bald part to the hair part, but it has to blend in perfectly. Like the it has to be a like a subtlety to it, so it will be faded all around. And then he has the mustache uh, with you know what I mean. So, but it's nicely shaped up. He got look like he got pretty good hair and everything. Pretty nice hair. So. Yeah, I, I only answer that because I saw that Heather said something about it. Right, it doesn't matter. But who I know who's who actually playing. Popovich runs that. Popovich. But, but who's he, the Popovich? Yeah, so so I think that I think imagine imagine if Popovich steps out in the middle of a game and the whole thing just keeps running as its own machine. Becky well. Hammond steps yeah. in. It, it, I know it, the coaching staff. I don't even know if she's not it, there it, anymore. It, but what I'm but saying it doesn't is, matter who it is, and the machine still runs. I, I'm aware. So, so it, runs. it is. It is. Here's how. Here's how it works. Yes. Here's how it works. Here we go. And this is the, not to go. I, I want to catch you. I don't think no, that you're using. I'm taking it that way. I'm genuinely trying to understand a phrase that I feel like. I've used without really knowing. So at a certain point, the bureaucracy becomes its own creation. That's what it is. So if you want to take, for example, the can, FBI. Can I say one thing yeah. about this and how it helps me understand? Sure. So in Hollywood, before I did really anything in entertainment and I was on the outside of it, I thought that there was these like organized meetings or, uh, amongst people in Hollywood. They're like, here's the agenda. We're going to push <laughs> trans. We're going to push gay. We're going to push Hindu. Way. I uh, what it. I learned I doubt it is that way. it's people that are trying to keep their job. Yeah. And by trying to keep their job, they're doing the things that they believe will be rewarded or very least they won't yes. be punished. Yes. So, so is this what you mean yeah. by- so, so there's a version of that. Um, I mean, I think that a lot of what most people refer to as conspiracy theories, the ones that certainly are true, are really just an amalgam of collective incentives that are hiding in plain yes. sight. That's that really, we think yeah. there's these nefarious individuals that are holding right. the there, puppet there, is, there is no smoke-filled room. Have to be. Yes. You, you're missing. If you're, if you're worried, yes. if you're fixated on where's the smoke-filled room, you're missing the point. Right. Right. And so I think that, like you know, this idea of you know the, that you're not supposed to utter, uh, you know, the great replacement theory or whatever. This idea that there's an intentional plot mm -hmm. to supplant the native white stock of the US for a bunch of people crossing the southern border to permanently secure electoral outcomes to the contrary. That's conspiracy theory. But if you take great replacement theory out of it, you take the idea of somebody concocting this in a smoke-filled room out of it, and then you just look at the last 20 years of policy, much of one of the two political parties in the US, as recently as about a decade ago, said, well, immigration, legal or not, is going to be a key to securing lasting electoral majorities. And so that's why so we should tend to favor this. Including even exactly. in the context of that right, was, right, right, right. you can even remember the context, was convincing a kind of Bernie-esque minority view that was sort of skeptical of competition for domestic workers to sort of, it was a carrot to say, no, 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 I know that this might like in the short run run against some of the things you stand for, yeah. but think about what it could open up yeah. in the long run if we have lasting electoral majorities. So it was earnest as a right. persuasion mechanism that today, if offered uttered, uttered by people on the so-called other side, becomes a conspiracy theory, but it's nothing more than just right. a statement of incentives hiding in plain sight. So it goes with the bureaucracy. And I want to say a word about the bureaucracy. I don't love the word deep state only because it, 
implies that it's limited to the government. What I call it, people don't like it when I say this and say, they say it doesn't resonate with people, but the word that I use is it, it's the managerial class. Is Jamie Dimon part of the managerial class? I think the people uh, two to three layers below Jamie Dimon absolutely are. And I think in some sense, Jamie Dimon is ish, ish on it. So there's three classes of people. Of, I talk about this in my first book, Woke Inc., a little bit. I mean, you got the creators, right? The actual, you could, could be a professor at a university as opposed to the associate dean of God knows what. Could be the entrepreneur proprietor who started the company as opposed to the vice president of human resources. Could be the elected president of the United States versus you know the, the class that sits underneath them. You've got the creators, you've got the constituents, customers, shareholders, voters. Mm. And then you've got the managerial class who are the higher middle management bureaucracy designed to administer that which the creators have created with the intention of serving the constituents, hmm. but to make it scalable. Like that's, that's the basic premise of it, in, in a corporate context or not. And I think we live in a moment right now where the balance of power between those three categories has vastly shifted towards the managerial class, the committee class as we could call it, the permanent, the permanent bureaucracy or what we would call in government, the permanent state. I think it's true in every sphere of our lives right now. I think it's true in corporate America. I think it's true in universities, but it so happens, and I do think it's the mother of all bureaucracies, it is absolutely true in the government that the people who we elect yeah. have almost nothing to do with what actually impacts most people's everyday lives compared to the permanent machine that sits under it and is fundamentally agnostic to the political party who's on top as long as they're gonna keep the party going. So, and so Joe Biden's one version of that, Nikki Haley's another version of that. I wish that he can simplify what he just now said because if you're not taking notes, you're lost. Yeah, I'm certain that some of you out there are the geniuses that was picking up every single thing he was putting down. Like, yeah, everything he's saying is correct. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. What he's saying, pretty much, this is pretty much what he's saying. What he's saying is, blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. He sound like the teachers on, um, on, 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 what's, 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 um, was it, was it Snoopy? What's what's the name of the dag on a, a TV show? What's the cartoon? What's the cartoon name? Wah 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 wah. That's what he sound like. Because he's so intelligent and he's breaking it down in a way that he believe is going to be simple. He's trying to simplify it. <laughs> he's trying to simplify it for Andrew Schultz, his team, and the supporters of the Andrew Schultz podcast. <laughs> And that was not simplistic, but in my opinion, Charlie Brown, that's what it, the wah, 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 that's what it is. Charlie Brown, peanuts, yes. All right, so, but for us to hear it, it's like, bro, like, make it plain, man. One sentence, what are you saying? <laughs> but he's intelligent, he's locked in. And a lot of people, that they just don't see that this brother really knows what he's talking about. He really knows what he's talking about so much so that he got us all confused at the moment. Not us all. I'm not talking about you guys who are the nerds of the group. And calling you a nerd is not anything bad. It used to be. But now I'm realizing that nerds run the world, man. The smartest people in the world. Y'all kill it. So the Either way is a safe choice. Deep State is essentially just bureaucracy. Yeah. And your mission as president would have been to eliminate. Dismantle. Would have been 75% a, a, of the, a, jack, a jackhammer. And that's just like why, a chainsaw. And I'm just trying to help people yeah. who might be like, oh, this guy wants to abolish the Department of Education. What the f is that? You're just yeah. trying to eliminate the bureaucracy from the Department of Education. Eliminate the bureaucracy from yeah. so many of the FBI. All because these, right. the, bureaucracy is, yeah. the bureaucracy itself is causing what? Is causing a separation between what the constituents want yes. and what the executive. The dissipation of accountability is Great. what disappears. So, so they know the managerial yeah. folks no longer have accountability That's right. to their constituents. That's right. And that is because there is this. They don't even have constituents. That's the thing. They don't even have constituents. So I'll give it to you in a corporate context so we can depoliticize it, then we can bring it back to politics. How about you just simplify it, bro? Just simplify it. Don't just simplify it, bro. For 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 not, you know what I mean? I'm one of the geniuses that understand every single thing you talking about. I get it. It's the it's the people that watch my videos that don't get it. They need to, they need you to simplify for them. Me, I get it. I can I can say every single thing that he just now said back to you verbatim just to let you know that I get it. 
But I'm not here to show off my intellectual acumen or anything like that. Not at all. <laughs> I just want my supporters to understand what you're saying. So could you please simplify it for them? Like in corporate America right now, and this is where I spent my career shortly before running for president, is you have something that happened basically in original OG capitalism. You have the proprietor who's also the owner, who's also the CEO and the operator. Then it all comes down to a question of scale. So the question is, oh, we couldn't scale that without hiring professional management so that the owner can do other things and create new things or, or whatever the owner wants to do. And so he hires the CEO and the CFO, et cetera. And so there was like in business school for, I don't know if any of you have background, doesn't matter. But if you go to business school, one of the things they'll teach you about is the separation of ownership and control. Mm. So that was like one of the original sins kind of thing where the owner is no longer the person who exercises control. And that creates what they call a principal agent problem. So the principal is the owner, the agent is the hired hand. And then like all of modern corporate law and business theory and securities law is designed to basically address that gap. So they have these things called fiduciary duties that the CEO will owe to the owner, but eventually they start behaving badly in a way that just flies around private jets at the owner's expense and claim that it's a business need. And then that's where the private equity industry was actually born in the 1980s, designed to sort of say, okay, well, we're gonna retake ownership and clean house. And that was like where the Henry Kravises and the, and the Steve Schwartzmans kind of came from. So that's in the, in the realm of capitalism. Then something else happened in the last 20 years, which is, okay, so they said the shareholders are the ones who have control, but the managerial class, having not taken it over at the level of the corporation, went to the direction of the shareholders themselves. They started to pretend to be the shareholders in the guise of firms like BlackRock and State Street or Vanguard or whatever that aggregate, I don't know how, if these words mean anything to yes. you. Okay. I mean, aggregate probably most of your money directly or indirectly, 401k accounts, pension funds, et cetera, to say that, okay, we are the shareholders, but we're representing other people's money, and so we're gonna have you adopt policies that actually are in our own interest. Not the shareholders. Not, not the actual shareholders or the capital But owners. since we're the shareholders because we're holding their money. We're holding the stock, exactly. So you're using, so let's say you're BlackRock, <laughs> and let's say you're two <laughs> retirees. You give your money over to BlackRock, BlackRock buys shares in, I don't know, Apple. Sure. Actually, that's a good example to use because there was a specific now case they're using Apple. that leverage on Apple to do what that, they want. Was specifically on Apple and BlackRock. This is a real life story in 2022. <laughs> voted for racial equity audits at Apple, which Apple initially said hell no to. Yeah. But they said no, no, no we're going to vote for it. And then back in the old school version, if the CEO was pushing that kind of philosophy, the shareholders would say, no, you're the agent. You're held I'm the principal and you have a fiduciary duty to me. Yeah. But this, it's always a cat and mouse game, but now it's gone to the shareholders and they're like, no, 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 we are the shareholders. And we're telling you that you we need to adopt this policy. BlackRock. BlackRock, this right. Because yes. today, if you go to the SEC's website and see who are the shareholders of Apple, yes. they're gonna be you know, number one or two or three on this the list. This is really interesting. And so, and so it's always this cat and mouse game where the managerial class is always about getting one heads up. So that's, there's a whole private sector version of this and two of my three books are about this stuff and we could go on for days about it. But I use that as an analog because sometimes when you talk about politics, people lose their mind. There's something similar going on and I think of even greater import in the government where yeah. there's a cat and mouse game between the elected representatives who, say what you will, still have to go back to their constituents every couple of years, yes. every two, four, or six years, depending on Congress, President, or Senate, yes. and, and ask for permission to govern. Whereas what these people say is, no, 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 how do we drain as much of that power as possible so that we're agnostic? Who are these people? The bureaucrats. The bureaucrats. Yeah. So these people. Absolutely. These the people, how are we the people who work for Anthony the power Fauci. As... From, from the electeds as possible mm. to make sure that we're agnostic to who actually gets into power in those seats in the first place. So they're neutering them intentionally. They're neutering them intentionally, yes. It depends on how much detail you want to go into, but I can I even want tell you some the of the detail. This okay. is, no, this is very important because I think a lot of your ideas, when explained in this way, are incredibly digestible. And the problem is cable TV is 30 second hits and, or, or well, two, two and a half hold, hold on one second. That's yeah. the game, though. That is the game. You know what and I mean? I've like, this. And so I, I got to like, get good at that. I've, 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 or spoken, get better at that. You, I mean, yeah. We talked about uh, what, you know Bernie, for example. Like I remember when Bernie was going up against Trump, and there was this real, there was this real issue where I think like American voters really wanted it to be Bernie versus Trump, and I think that they were so disillusioned with that would have been a good race. And that then, would have been a useful race for the country. Actually, I, I've like you know, and I said it was like ah, oh, the Democrats stole it from Bernie with the whatever. Mm -hmm. But here's the reality: that's the system yes. that he was operating within, and yeah. hasn't tried to change. 
So if the system can break you or can sway using the, what are they called, the um, oh, super delegates or whatever, super delegates or whatever can, that's the system that you, and if you're not breaking that system, if you're using that system, that is- You become a product of it eventually. You, exactly. Now, Bring a so jackhammer, get the hell out. Of Drop course, the mic but if it's 30 out. seconds, yeah. a, a, a bite on MMS, MNBC, this is another problem with the bureaucracy, you could even argue, that is impossible to describe an issue that is this inundated with bullshit mm -hmm. in 30 seconds. Well, so the people don't even know where the disconnect is between them and their representatives. I'm sorry, but I'm gonna interrupt. Yeah. I'm reading Woke Inc. I actually do read You're it. You're reading it right now? I'm so reading thank it right you. now. I'm I listening to that. the audiobook, actually. Okay. To be honest, I don't. I read the audiobook for that one. I read that one. Yeah, one, I know. Actually. That's yeah. why I was more like inclined to do it. The, the book, and you're, How far you are, are, you? are, chapter eight. Okay. You are one of the most brilliant people I've ever heard speak. Most people Thank are you, not you. I'm an idiot. I'm listening <laughs> to your I'm book. Too, and I'm not, a lot of this, I'm just struggling to keep up as you're even speaking now. But I'm really. Thank you for admitting that, man. Sometimes, let me tell you something. Transparency can go a long way. You don't have to act like you understand. Just ask questions when you have an opportunity. But please, please, please don't come up with your own ideas of what they're saying if you just, okay, what, I think you're saying this and I'm going to go off of that. No, if you have no understanding, ask. If you, if you don't have the opportunity to ask, go and do your own research outside of that so you can have a better understanding of what's being said. Uh, but I love the fact that he said, man, look, <laughs> you're brilliant. Even while you're sitting here talking, I'm having a hard time keeping up. And I'm certain I'm not the only one in the room because I'm pretty smart. Me, I'd be in that bad boy like, what the hell is he talking about? 